Ah, yes. Top of the evening, it is your boy, Flat Range Hipster. Today we're going to discuss my preferred home defense setup. This is an 1887 uh, Vetterly. <clears throat> I use this to uh, ward off the foes that trample upon my property to steal my crops or whatever it, they do in uh, circa 1900. They don't make ammo for it anymore. So you can do just about anything but shoot someone with it. It's a prank. Literally, my suspenders are attached to um, joggers. And uh, this is a clip-on, so haters are going to hate. It's a prank. I'm literally playing with lamps in my room to get the lighting somewhat okay. But it's about time that I did an AK update video. Because it has been a fun year, hasn't it? Hasn't it? Let's talk about it. This is my Rifle Dynamics uh, SAM 7. I made a video showcasing it this time last year almost. Why not discuss how I have it set up now and some pros and cons to how it's set up, okay? So the same basic principles from last year apply now. So it's a, a semi-automatic rifle with a sling, uh, a light, a pressure pad, and an optic. And some things, oh, and a grip. And some things have changed to make it a better shooting experience. This is freaking awkward. And safety check it. Um, things that have changed previously, the light was a Surefire dual fuel um, with an RSO7 mount on top. And it has changed to a mod light PLHV2. So it is a much, uh, I don't know if it's brighter, but the Candela on these mod lights is just phenomenal. So a really long concentrated beam going out there and illuminating things that are far away. And instead of that RSO7, we have a mod light mod button. So really simple, really sleek. Um, one problem that I've been having, I don't know if it's with my tail cap or my plug, but I was having a little bit of issues with it not being uh, reliable. And I'm talking about the activation of the mod button. So sometimes it would be finicky. Sometimes it would kind of be like a low flickery light coming out. Um, when I hit this, it's um, I haven't ran into any issues there lately. But uh, yeah, maybe it fixed itself. Maybe there is just like moisture or crud on the plug. I don't know. Um, with the rail that houses all of the doodads on the gun, it would, with all AKs, AKs get really hot, but especially if they have a metal forend, the metal conducts the heat and it makes it very uncomfortable to hold. A very knowledgeable individual in the comment section pointed me in the direction of this product. What the freak is this? This is a burn proof gear rail wrap and it's made out of Kevlar. And uh, before this grip was a Magpul, uh, Magpul vertical grip that uh, when this thing got super duper hot and I couldn't grab it like so, I would grab it like so to avoid the metal burning. But with the rail wrap, it does a really fantastic job protecting the user's hands from the heat conducted from the metal forend. The light mounting situation also had to change up and there is a con there, we'll get into that. Uh, before I had an Arasaka, I believe a 90 degree um, mount for what used to be the Surefire dual fuel. Now I have an Arasaka inline mount. It attaches right here. 
and that allows for a rail wrap to sit more comfortably over the entire assembly. A problem that we run into is though we do have a very or a much more comfortable uh, setup up here, it puts the bezel of the light right into the blast zone of the muzzle brake. And since this muzzle brake is pinned and welded, that can create issues. Um, really the biggest issue, it's not that serious, it's a really tough light. Um, I don't think it's gonna get like blasted and broken, but I do have to rub off built up carbon right here uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but there's no such thing as a perfect situation. If I could have it my way, I would have it so that I have the rail wrap and the light just a little bit further back here so it's not in the way of the blast zone of the muzzle brake. But it is what it is. The grip that is on here, we got some Ruski riding on there. This is the Zenit Co. PK6? LK6? I don't know what it's called. If you choose to run this grip on an M-Lock system, it's important to note that the Zenit Co. did not design their products to fit on the M-Lock system. They have it set up for a proprietary system. I believe it's called the Base or the Bassi. It's a proprietary system, but fret not. This problem is easily remedied. Um, you can stick this on any uh, M-lock grip so long as you have the proper T-nut and corresponding screw that's properly sized. And that's what I have. I think this is a Magpul T-nut and a short screw. Get it on Amazon for like six bucks. So that was a really good fortunate uh, fix for this. A lot of people run four grips on their AKs that have this angle cut in it. And that is because uh, of the angle by which you got to lock your new mag in. A normal grip can kind of get in the way of it if you have it ran farther back like I do now. But uh, so far so good. I like it. It's aesthetic. And uh, I'm pleased with it. Same optic as before. This is the Trigicon. This is the Trigicon RMR. Um, still on top of the SLR Rifle Works railed gas tube that has not changed. Um, the SLR rail has held up phenomenally well. Yeah, optic has held up nice. I don't really treat this thing nice. I kind of throw it around and get it banged up, but it has maintained zero. I thought I'd really do any crazy shooting with it. I mostly just do flat range stuff and shoot targets sometimes 100 yards away. Um, mostly closer just because uh, we like Instagram clout more than actual skill retention. <laughs> the paint. It's a prank. Paint is interesting, huh? I don't really care what any of my stuff looks like anymore. That's why it kind of is a splatter gat now. Uh, I was fooling around with some paint pens and wanted to uh, make it look hilarious. Um, so that is exactly what I did. Got rid of all the stickers, put the splatter paint on myself. That was that was fun. Um, and I think I practiced on this mag. Uh, but I'm like, you know what? It looks kind of cool because looking cool is the only reason why we spend this much money on, on crap, right? I think I had a VTAC sling on it previously to now, but um, we're doing some meme camos, myself and a buddy of mine, and he got really into multicam black. I decided to make this rail wrap multicam black, and I wanted to get a different sling. This is a Ferro Concept Slingster, and to match the rail wrap, uh, it is also multicam black. I don't really care too much about camo, as you can tell. It looks like it's a freaking disco ball gone wrong. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much my gun so far. No issues with the gun. The only real problems that I run in with the gun is user error or crummy ammo not wanting to uh, detonate. But that's like a, it's like a 1 in 100 thing. So 99% 
Uh, reliability is good enough for me. If I run into that, it just comes down to training and repetitions. What are you going to do when your gun runs into a malfunction? Figure out how to clear it. Get back in the exercise. Ah! Oh, no! Get back into the fun you're doing and uh, put holes in paper plates or mag dump into trash. Um, but... Yeah, here's some footage of me doing the same drill over and over again over the course of this past, like, eight months. Uh, enjoy. Uh, what's up, beautiful people? Uh, shooting steel targets up close is very dangerous. Uh, if you choose to shoot steel up close, you must wear eye protection, and uh, you must have medical gear on standby and someone who knows how to apply in the event of uh, shrapnel. As lighthearted and cringe as I get, uh, please understand that safety is paramount and I do not want anyone to get hurt as they enjoy the hobbies that I endorse. Up! I suck with the pistol. It's a prank. <laughs> 